Happy Monday. Um, I'm off today. And I'm very thankful. However, that didn't stop Jesus from waking me up in my normal time because I told him he could have the first hour of my day. I don't know if I was supposed to be more specific when I told him that. Um, because to me that kind of meant I could sleep in certain days, but not today. But I'm thankful. Um, I've been back here in, in my office for well a while, like five o'clock, because he gonna wake me up that early. There's there's gonna be coffee first to get my brain moving. But um we're gonna talk about lions and tigers and bears. Oh my. Um, which the whole, that just cracks me up. That just, I'm like, okay, Jesus, that's funny. Um, and where this went, this, this rabbit hole was just awesome. Um, so have you had one of them days where you woke up and you were like, oh, thank you, Jesus, for waking me up. And then you go get your coffee if you're whatever you drink in the morning and you were like, yes, praise God for, for this beverage. I'm a coffee drinker. So I'm like, yes, thank you, Jesus, for the coffee. And then you get in your, your prayer. I do my I had to switch my prayer time in the morning. Um, so I'm, you just, yes, thank you, Jesus. I feel your presence. I'm, I'm praying. I'm reading the word. You just, you having a great day. I'm working from home. So when you log on and you ain't got no system issues, you, Yes, Jesus. Okay. We doing some things today. In my typical work day, I am in like back-to-back -back meetings and it's just part of it. So I'm used to it. But there was one day, one day where I'm in this meeting and somebody asks a question. I make a suggestion and this lady did not care for my suggestion, which was just, it's what we ended up doing anyway, but she got an attitude. Now, like I grew up in the hood, so that part of that's still still there where I'm just, who you talk, well, I'm gonna take my earrings out, who you talking to? But I'm at work and I gotta be nice and I'm, you know, a new creature. So, so we get done with that meeting and I'm a little, uh, Jesus, who's she talking to? Like, I done prayed. I'm done in the right mindset. She's trying to ruin my day. Mm -mm. So I, I changed. I walked away and I'm starting to thank God. Just whatever. I Like, I'm, I'm starting at the top of my body and working my way down just to get my mindset back. And I'm like, okay, God, I'm going to thank you for my, my eyes to see your masterpieces. And I'm going to thank you for my ears to hear your word. And I'm going to thank you for my elbows and my knees to remind me to be flexible and bend into you. And I'm going to thank you for my arms so I can hug my loved ones. And then I said, and I thank you for my tiger stripes. Because they are a result of me giving life. Now, in that moment, what my brain did was kind of open up a little tab over here. And at the same time, like, I'm still praying and thanking God for all this stuff, but my brain is like, I wonder which, like, would win in a fight, a lion or a tiger? Like, which one's stronger? What are their character? I'm starting to, like, build a list of questions on lions and tigers. And it kind of made me laugh. And I'm like, what is, what is my brain doing? <laughs> and of course curiosity kill the cat kind of thing moment so I start digging in to characteristics of lions and tigers do buckle up because like after that I'm just like I'm just gonna be a tiger for Jesus hang on a second hang on so lions we're gonna talk about them first they don't run very fast they typically gorge themselves and then rest for several days. They prey on a variety of animals from rodents to hippos. <laughs> you guys hear my kid? He's very excited. They mark their territory and proclaim it's theirs with a roar. 
They don't pay any attention to the wind's direction, which can carry their scent to their prey. They live in prides and typically spend the day in scattered groups and unite to hunt or share a meal. They are most active at night. Their most distinct feature on um, is their mane, which fringes their face and blocks their eyesight. They are second in size to the tiger. Let's talk about tigers. So they get short bursts of high speed with their running, but they have very muscular legs. They gorge themselves because they don't know and they're not guaranteed when their next meal is going to come or where it's going to come from. It could be several days. They rarely roar and are humble towards their group. A group of tigers are called an ambush. At night, a tiger can see six times more clear than a human. They do not spend more energy than what's needed. They have a strong eyesight, good survival skills, and they are the largest among wildcats. Okay. So what happened that I went down this rabbit hole about lions and tigers? And I know it was like, where's bears? We're going to get to it. Give me a second. So then, so the reason that lions popped in my mind is 1 Peter 5 and 8. It says for us to be vigilant because our adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion is walking around seeking whom he may devour. So in that moment, my brain went, well, if the devil's a lion and I got tiger stripes, who's winning? Just me. Just little old me and Jesus over here. Okay. You know, sometimes you're, you're in those battles that God's a little quiet and you're in those tests and trials and God's trying to see if you're going to be steadfast and where your faith really is. But when you think about a battle and spiritual warfare, regular, let's go sports even. You don't walk onto any field, any court. You've done your research to see what your opponent and what they're, what they're going to do, what their characteristics are. Well, God compares Satan to a lion. There's the lion's characteristics. I'm over here with my tiger stripes. I like the tiger's characteristics. Hang on, hang on. It gets better. My soul's happy. <clears throat> so we're going to face those trials and tests. We're going to go through some scripture real quick. So, James 1, 2 through 4. My brethren counted all joy when you fall down into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. James 1 and 12. Blessed is the man that endureth temptations, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. 1 Peter 1, 6 through 9. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials, that the genuineness of your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen you love. Though now you do not see him, yet believing you rejoice with joy inexpensible and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Isaiah 48, 10. Behold, I have refined you, but not as silver. I have tested you in the furnace of affliction. Psalms 26, 2. 
David prayed for God to test him. And he said, examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try my mind and my heart. So when those tests and trials come and God seems a little quiet, you got to remind yourself of all the promises and that it's a good thing. <clears throat> now, when we go back to, to our adversary, 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 9 already lays out the devil's plan. But 2 Timothy 3, 10 through 17 tells you where to keep your focus in those times. So the world's job, and I said this, I don't, maybe we need to say it again, but the world's job is to be the world. The church's job is to stay focused in the plans that God has laid out for you. There's a lot of them. You are to pray and draw close. Remember who gave you your joy and remember where your strength comes from and that you are remember who you are in Christ and all of his promises so remember that the devil is seeking whom he may devour but he can't run as fast as you can run to the foot of that cross He's got to rest after he's gorged himself with evil works. That battle won't last forever. And Psalms 35, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. That devil don't care how big or little you are. Those battles are going to come, so you better be ready. Whatever, wherever you are in your walk, you've got to be ready, which means you've got to pray. You've got to get in that Bible. He is going to roar and make a bunch of fuss to distract you. But Matthew 16, 19 says to whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Those lions aren't paying attention to the direction of the wind. And if you went, if you go to my church, my pastor talked about how God works in the whirlwind yesterday. And then when I started digging into this again, Man, the devil's not paying attention to that wind. But there are four winds from God coming to collect his bride. And that is in Mark 13, 26 through 27. Now, it's getting good. Prides. Those lions walking around in prides. What's the Bible say about pride? Psalms 59, 12. For the sin of their mouth and the words of their lips, let them even be taken in their pride. Psalm 73, 6. Therefore, pride serves as their necklace. Violence covers them like a garment. Proverbs 8, 13. The fear of the Lord is to hate evils, pride, and arrogance. And the evil way and the perverse mouth I hate. Devil's working at night when he thinks when he thinks you're sleeping and not paying attention. But Job 34 25 says, therefore he knows their works and he overthrows them in the night. The devil's hair is blocking his view. But God sees all. Proverbs 15, 3. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, keeping watch on the evil and the good. So now that we've learned about the opposition, let's, oof, let's talk about tigers. So those high speed and those muscular legs and short bursts of energy. So my legs... I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to run too far, but they can carry me to my prayer closet where right then and there, I can remember where my hand is and it's in my master's hand. The hand of Jesus that upholds me, strengthens me. And in those moments, all I have to do is get to that foot of the cross and lay it down and praise him. 
And that's in Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. So tigers gorge themselves because they don't know when they're going to eat again. So when you're in that moment of quiet and God feels far away, remember where he brought you from and feast on that for a second. And then you remember that he will never leave you or forsake you. And that's in Deuteronomy 31 and 8 and Jeremiah 15 and 16. Your words were found and I ate them. And your word was with me, the joy and rejoicing of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord God of hosts. Like that's in there. So tigers don't need to roar and rarely do because they're humble. And James 4.10 says, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. Psalms 147.6, the Lord lifts up the humble. He casts the wicked down to the ground. So Proverbs 11.2, when pride comes, then comes shame. But with the humble is wisdom. Tigers are powerful. In Philippians 2, 9 through 11, therefore God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every man, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth. James 2, 19 says, even demons tremble because they know. Oh, I really like this part. A group of tigers together is called an ambush. The definition of an ambush is a surprise attack. It's by people waiting for their surprise attack. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. But it also, hang on, this is two-parter. Matthew 18, 20 says, where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there in the midst. First Thessalonians 5, 11, we are to encourage one another and build each other up, which means sometimes we're going to have to ambush heaven together. That awesome. Tiger's views aren't obstructed. They got pretty good eyesight. Which is the first part of that 1 Peter 5 and 8. Be vigilant. You got to watch. Matthew 26, 41 says, watch and pray. We are equipped to see what the enemy is doing. We understand in those moments that no weapon formed against us will prosper. And that is Isaiah 54, 17. So where are you looking? Is your focus on the problem? Because then that's all you're going to see. Or is your focus on God? And then you can see all the little blessings that maybe you're missing. Now is not the time for us to lose our focus. Now, now is not the time. Acts 2, 17 through 21 talks about what God will do in the last days. And that's where my eyes have to be. That, that's where your focus has to be. Tigers ain't spending too much energy. They're, they're not wasting that. Now, how many times in the Bible does it say not to fear, be dismayed, be anxious? I did not go through and count personally all of them, but it's a lot. So quit wasting your energy on the things of this world that's happening. But sit in his grace and mercy and sit in. If you're going to spend some energy, spend it on God. There's a lot of stuff happening. All things work together for good. That's where your energy, okay, it's, it's your good, not my good. Two definitions, two different ones. That's all things. That's where our energy is supposed to be. So if you're not in that tiger test where you got to constantly encourage yourself and here's where the bears come in, then maybe you're the bear. Which means when I'm struggling and I can't keep my focus, Galatians 6.2 says we are to bear one another's 
burdens. Lions, tigers, bears. We better start standing on that power of God. He gave us that power to defeat that lion and remember whose we are. Romans 8, 37 through 39 says, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, life, angels, principalities, power, things present, things to come, height, depth, any creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is Christ Jesus our Lord. Luke 10, 19 says, Behold, I have given you authority Ooh. to tread on serpents and scorpions, scor scorpions and over the power of the enemy and nothing shall harm you. Do you understand how Are you getting that too? If your hand is in Jesus' hand, what are you worrying about? Because the God that I'm serving, and I'm about to go through a lot of scripture really quick. John 8, 58 says he is the great I am. Exodus 6, 3 says he is almighty. Galatians 3, 5 says he is the miracle worker. John 1 through 3. 1 3 says he is the creator. Jeremiah 32 17 and 27 says he is powerful. Psalms 139 1 and 13 says he is ever present. Numbers 23 19 says he is unchangeable. Isaiah 63 and 1 says he is mighty to save. Philippians 4:19 says he is meeting our needs through Jesus. John 14 6. 6 says he is the way, the truth, and the life. Revelation 17, 14, he is the king of kings, and he is the Lord of lords. Revelations 22, 16 says he is the bright and morning star. Isaiah 9 and 6 says he is the counselor. He is wonderful. He is mighty, and he is the prince of peace. Hebrews 13, 8 says he is the same yesterday, today, today. And forever. Revelations 19.11 says he is faithful and true. Acts 10.34 says he is no respecter of person. Isaiah 48.17 says he is our redeemer. 1 John 2 and 1 says he is our advocator. Colossians 1.27 says he is our hope of glory. And Colossians 1.13 and 14 says he is our deliverer. So in that small little praise... And that small little sight, that small little recognition of the fact that God let me bring life, I got to dig in and see just how much life he brought me within his word. It is life. He's in all these things. He is who he says he is. And my only job some days is to just hold on just a little bit. I already know how the story ends. I already know it's for my good. Why am I doubting? Why, why am I fearful? I'm not just going to have to remind myself, though. It's... Sometimes we got to remind ourselves, period, just not to give the world so much energy and refocus all of that on the promises from God that I serve. Because the devil may, but God said it and he already did it. Who? Listen, that one got me excited. So sometimes I'm just going to remind myself I need to like be a tiger and read them scriptures and just remind myself of those promises because God has a plan and that plan is for good. I love you guys. Have a great Monday.